Hi, my friends. Welcome to Bible. That's kind of the last of the uh, Armor of God, which I just so enjoyed doing with you guys. I've just loved it. So uh, let's bow our heads and let's pray and we'll get to it. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love for us. I thank you, Lord, that we can learn more about you, learn about the armor of God, that have it placed on our hearts, Lord, to just put that on, Lord, before we even step out of bed. And um, I try and do that in the morning, Lord. I try and read my Bible and have my quiet time with you. And when we do it, Lord, I just pray that it sticks through us all day long. So, Lord, thank you that we can come to a place and to a school where we can learn more about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Let us do the um, books of the Bible. So here we go. And one more. And go. Go. Play. And How about you? 
Are you tired? Too funny. All right. So here we go. All right. We're going to be talking about the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Now, remember these uh, this section, which is um, Ephesians 6, 10 through 11, was written by, do you remember? Paul. Do you remember where he was at? Rome. And where in Rome? Prison, right? And even though he was there, he didn't give up. He kept talking about the Lord. I don't know. If I was in prison, I wouldn't be very happy. But he never stopped. So all the times, he, all the how many times? Three or four times he was in prison, he always would write to the, all the churches to encourage them. Or if he heard what was going on, he would encourage them more. And he had heard um, about Ephesus. And so he wrote to them to really encourage them to obey Jesus and what to do. And that's when he said, put on the full armor of God. And that will take care of you. Always put on the full armor of God. And also, this was written 25 years after Jesus had gone to heaven. Kind of want you to remember some of those things. If you get this Bible, which you will next year, okay, here, let me make this a tad bigger so you can see it. Some of you might already have it. This is the coolest Bible. I just love it because when you open it up to each book, like this is Ephesians, it tells you who wrote the book. Paul wrote the book. Why was the book written? Ephesians says that the church is not just a building. The church is made up of people who love and obey Jesus. And uh, why he wrote the book, when he wrote the book. This is a really a neat Bible. I love this Bible because it just gives you some more information on the people that wrote it. And when it was written, it's, it's interesting to know that Ephesians was written 25 years after uh, Jesus went to heaven. Let's see. Here's... Um, what was another one I was looking at? Galatians. Does it tell us Galatians was written about 20 years after? So Galatians was written before Ephesians. So I do. I just I love it when they give you information like that and who wrote it. Just awesome. OK, so now let's get down to business here. This is why I get off the screen. So now we're talking about the helmet of salvation. And I want you to look at this helmet. How many of you remember David and Goliath? Remember David and Goliath and how David took the, took the stone and went bam, and he got Goliath right here? Well, look at this helmet. See that right there? It goes between the eyes. Well, I'll tell you, when um, the Philistines, who Goliath was a Philistine, they did not have that there. And that is why that stone got right between the eyes. And I think it was after that, then they decided, you know, we kind of need this little piece of metal right there to protect our brain. And so they did. But just think, uh, he didn't have that right there. So that's why it got him right between the eyes and killed him. So your helmet of salvation. Salvation is, like, is part of the word saved. And this helmet of salvation is knowing that you are saved. It protects your mind from doubts and fears and sends the devil away like a scaredy cat. He just is gone. Sorry, I got a little itch right here. Um, so you need that helmet of salvation, knowing that when you ask Jesus into your heart, he loves you and he's not going away. You need to remember that. Jesus, once you have him in your heart, he will not go away. And we need to have that knowing, having no doubts. Even when we do something wrong, we still have that helmet of salvation. And you know what? I really messed up. I don't think God's very happy with me, but I'm saved and he still loves me. So we always in the morning have to put that on so we don't have any doubts that he loves us. Okay, let's see what our little video here says. All right. Okay, here we go. I can't see it. There's a spiritual battle taking place between God and the devil over the hearts of each person on earth. Since the beginning of time, God has been fighting for people to know who he is and how much he loves them. God knew that sometimes we would doubt his love. And he also knew that the devil would try to make us think God doesn't love us. So God gave us a piece of armor to protect our minds and help us remember the truth about his love. God wants us to live every day knowing that he loves us. He sent Jesus to earth to show us that love. One day, 
Jesus was visiting a town in Israel called Cana. There was a royal official whose son was sick in a nearby town. The official heard that Jesus was in Cana, so he went to Jesus and begged him to heal his son because he was about to die. Jesus told the official he could go back home because the boy was going to live. As the official left Jesus, he could have doubted if Jesus had really saved his son from dying. But instead, he believed what Jesus said and that Jesus loved him and his boy. As the official was on his way home, some of his servants ran to meet him on the road with some very good news. His son was alive and doing well. The official found out that it all happened at the exact minute Jesus said his son would live. Just like the official believed that Jesus could save his son from death, we can believe that Jesus can save us too. We are saved when we believe that Jesus died on the cross, took the punishment for our sins, and came back to life. Jesus' love saves us from receiving the punishment we deserve for the wrong things we do, and it gives us the promise of heaven with him one day. This promise of salvation is forever and can never be taken right. away. There's nothing in all of creation, nothing too great and nothing too evil, that can change how much God loves us. The helmet of salvation will help us remember this every day. We can put on the helmet of salvation. Awesome. That's right. Even So we have the helmet of salvation. No doubts. Okay? That's the big deal. You don't want to have doubts about how God feels about you. And the whole point is when he, you have them in your heart, you have them in your heart. So in a way, you kind of have to think to yourself, did I ask Jesus into my heart? Is he in there? Am I putting my life right there on for Jesus? So it's only between you and Jesus. So maybe you better think, did I do that? Because once you do it, do not doubt that you are not his child. Because once you have him, you're there. Okay, then we have the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is God's word, right? You speak it in truth and you watch the devil run. Okay, when you feel temptated, then think of some of the Bible verses that we've learned here in first grade and in kindergarten. And you know what? It doesn't even have to pertain or go with what you're being tempted with. Throw out a Bible verse. You are throwing Jesus at the devil and saying, Jesus is going to take care of me. Okay. And there is a story and it's going to, this little uh, video is going to tell about it. Remember how Jesus, um, how Satan took Jesus up to the top of the temple and up to the top of a mountain. And when we're watching this watch, you know, Satan does Bible verses too, but he twists them to go his way. And Jesus, he gives a Bible verse right back at him and kind of shuts the devil down. And that's what we want to do. We want the devil out of our face, don't we? Absolutely. So we've got to, you know, memorize our Bible verses, keep them in our hearts so we know them. Sometimes I remember a Bible verse, but I might remember this much of it. But just going over and over and over it, knowing, okay, I've got it. I feel better because I know Jesus is watching over me. Okay, let's watch about the sword of the Spirit. almost like the last one but it's got a little it's a little different okay even though you can't see it oh, there's a turn spiritual it battle taking place between god and the devil over the hearts of each person on earth since the beginning of time god has been fighting for people to know the truth there was a time when jesus himself needed to remember what was ah, true to be able this. to defeat the enemy one day the holy spirit led jesus into the desert he was out there for 40 days and 40 nights without anything to eat. You can probably imagine that Jesus was very hungry. The devil came to Jesus while he was in the desert and tried to tempt him three different times. The first time, the devil could tell that Jesus was hungry, so he tried to use that against Jesus. He said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus quoted from the scriptures and said, he goes. it is not just bread that keeps people alive. Their lives depend on what God says. Then the devil took Jesus to the top of the temple and said, If you are the son of God, jump off. 
because the scriptures say, God will command his angels to help you and their hands will catch you so that you will not hit your foot on a rock. But Jesus saw that the devil was trying to use the scriptures against him. So Jesus said, the scriptures also say that you should never test God. Finally, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. The devil said, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all of this. But Jesus had had enough. He told the devil, get away from me, Satan. The scriptures say to worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Because Jesus used God's word, he was able to defend himself when he was tempted. There you go. In the same way, the enemy will engage us in battle by tempting us to do what is wrong. When we feel like making fun of someone, lying, or doing something that we know is not what God says is best, we can use the sword of the Spirit to defend ourselves against that temptation. We can hold up the sword of the Spirit. Awesome. There you go. I love it. Whoops. Okay, let's get out of here. All right. So I love that. So get up every morning and put on the armor of God. I want to sing that one song. I thought this was a fun song that we sang yesterday. All right, so I want to sing it. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Put on the belt of truth and stop believing lies. That's mean. The breastplate of righteousness can never compromise. Put on the gospel shoes and share about God's love to people all around. Put on the armor of God every morning before your feet even hit the ground. Like that. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Be strong in the Lord. In the strength of his mind, yeah, yeah. Put on the whole armor of God That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil Put on the whole armor of God That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil Ephesians 6 and Now wear the shield of faith that's only found in Christ. The helmet of salvation, because Jesus paid the price. And hold the spirit sword, the word of God, because it'll keep you safe and sound. Put on the armor of God every morning before your feet even hit See, she decided ground. not to pass that mean note. She decided to keep it to herself and throw it away. Good girl. Mind. Be strong in the Lord. And in the strength of his mind, yeah, yeah. put on, on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Ephesians 6, 10, and 11. Around your waist, the belt of truth. Guarding your heart with the bracelet of righteousness. Walk around the world with the gospel shoes. Walk around the world with the gospel shoes. Wear on your arm the shield of faith. Wear on your arm the shield of faith. Protect your head with the helmet of salvation. Protect your head with the helmet of salvation. Hold in your hand the sword of the spirit. Hold in your hand the sword of the spirit. Hey, hey, come on, man. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Ephesians 6, 10, and 11. 
Now see, the girl's going to watch what the girl does with that mean no. See, there she goes, throws it away. You know, you don't do that. Good girl. That's great. All right. Well, you guys, I love talking about full armor of God. That was great because that's what we need to remember. Okay. So let's see. Let's start at the top. We have the salvation, the helmet of salvation, where we will not doubt that God loves us. When we ask into our heart, this remembering that we are saved, right? Okay. Then we have the breastplate of righteousness, knowing that Jesus is the truth and he shields us from the devil's lies. Okay. We know the truth in our heart and it's protecting our heart. So we have that on, right? We got our helmet, got our breastplate. All right. Then we've got to put our belt of truth, right? Okay. So our belt of truth is that God is the truth. And we've got to remember that. And I messed up because the breastplate of righteousness is knowing what is right. I apologize. And it's Jesus' is right, not ours. It's what God says is right. Accepting that Jesus has made you right with God and to guard your heart with that. And then the breastplate and then the belt of truth is that God is all truth. Satan is not the truth. God is all truth. Okay. He's the God of truth. Then you've got your little shoes. Okay which is sharing God's love with people. Be ready to tell about God and to tell about his peace. So wherever you go, showing his love, right? And it's not, like I said, it's not just going on and doing, throwing out Bible verses. It's how do you act? Do you act like Jesus wants you to act? That's the tough one, right? All right. And then we have the, right? The shield of faith. Your shield stops all the, the schemes of the devil, doesn't it? All the tricks, you just hold it up. And that's people maybe saying mean things to you and not being nice. You're going to put up that shield and go, boink, I don't care what you think. Because you know what? Jesus loves me. Okay? Someone says, you know, something um, not nice to you, boink, psh, don't care. Jesus loves me. Okay? That's what that shield could do. Just those things that people might say that are not nice, just boink. Don't even, don't. Go saying anything back to them. Just go, I, I'm a child of God. Boink, it's coming off. All right. And then you have the sword of the spirit. And that's God's word. That's his word. And maybe you don't know certain Bible verses. Go through God's word and read them. Okay. You have that sword of the spirit is God's word. And you need to speak in faith and watch the devil run. Just like Jesus did. Yeah. Satan threw out a Bible verse. But he, like I said, he twisted it for what he wanted. And then Jesus came right back with the truth. And that really stopped the devil, didn't it? All right. Well, sweeties, I hope you are challenged and take these things. And before your feet hit the ground, put on the full armor of God. All right, my loves. See you later. I pray that you have a blessed day. Bye-bye.